water signs, Cancer, Pisces, and Scorpio. Sun, Moon, and Rising, Venus signs. Welcome to your reading for the Super Strawberry Moon in Capricorn, which is today, the 25th of June, 2021. Um, I'm going to begin this reading with some dragon messages, which are major arcana messages. See what the overall energy is affecting us for this full moon. Um, and just to let you know, these readings should sort of play out in between two weeks and roughly six months, depending on what's happening in your life individually. These are general readings, they can be vice versa. Um, so I usually refer to masculine and feminine energies. Um, and the things that I mention here could be in regards to you or the people or persons you're dealing with. Okay, now let's out of the way. Let's see what we have. Ooh. Oh, we have temperance in reverse. Ooh, ow. Okay. Uh, that is the cards, but it actually came out in reverse, so I will read the message for you. Just a second. Card number 14, which comes down to five, the number of change. Change is in the air. Okay, so this is your card. <clears throat> it says the interplay of yin and yang. So the key word here is about unification, which it came out in reverse, so there'll be a lack of unification, I believe. That's what's going on. So the commentary here says, Temperance symbolizes the unification of yin and yang and the reconciliation of apparent opposites. Yin and yang are not actual opposites, but are rather two sides of the same coin. How can day exist without night or light without darkness? When we find harmony in places that once held contradiction, we naturally move to a higher vibration and find a deeper level of inner peace. This is the primary lesson of temperance. When we integrate the conscious with the unconscious and the physical and the spiritual, we begin to see a much broader picture. The key is seeking moderation in our thoughts, actions, and opinions. Open-mindedness allows us to see the big picture and to have awareness of others' perspective. When we temper our choices, we gain strength of character and durability of spirit. So the meaning here for the reverse card is trying to exert your will upon the world or allowing emotions to rule your judgment will only lead to discord. There is a time and a place for everything and impatience will only serve to make time seem seem even slower. If we don't temper our emotions, we can, become, we can become in danger of being ruled by them. When sorry, Where you find conflicts of interest, reconciliation is the best way forward. Wow. <laughs> so, I believe there has been a conflict of interest of some description. And reconciliation is what the universe is advising for us water signs. Sun, moon, rising, and Venus. Um, also, guys, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the video, but I am a Reiki healer and I have infused the table and other bits on this table with Reiki frequency. So if you'd like to receive their healing energy while you're watching this reading, please go ahead and say yes, either mentally or out loud, and you will see that. Okay, so what is the house energy that's playing out for my lovely water signs, Scorpio, Pisces, and Cancer for this full moon in Capricorn? So strawberry super moon. What is the house energy, please, for the water signs? <laughs> we have second house energy. Your assets, finances, and things that you value. Well, that is the area of your life that is um at play here. Hmm. So if there's conflict with your boss, try to reconcile it because it may not necessarily <laughs> Be the wisest course of action to maintain that argument. Okay, let's give this a shuffle. Now let's have a look at what activation we have. This is a sacred geometry activation cards. Some of these cards are quite astronomical. Okay, so what do we have for the water signs? Wow. <laughs> number 25, which comes down to a 7, which is the number of the divine. Very spiritual number. Um, emergence. The frequency of emergence invites us to approach our reality with a childlike attitude of innocence and wonderment, and to watch and celebrate the beauty that unfolds from that place. So, as this is a sacred geometry activation, if you would like to receive this activation fully, please pause the video and stare at the center of this card for about 10 to 35 seconds. Sorry, 10 to 30 seconds. I don't know why about 35 for. Um, 10 to 30 seconds, and you will receive that activation. Thank you. Just place that there. Get there. Didn't actually see the cards. 
Ooh. All right, so let us get on to the actual spread. I'm going to post six cards. There'll be a little bit of information in regards to the past, a little bit of clarifier as what's happened. And then we'll go into the present, another clarifier, and then the future with another clarifier. And I may clarify that once again, like I did for the Earth signs. So, what do we have for water signs? Cancer, Scorpio, Pisces, for this full moon, super strawberry moon. We have the two of wands, decisions, decisions. Decisions, decisions. Shall I follow that wonderful parting in those dark clouds and follow the shiny brick road? <laughs> I feel like, he said, not the yellow brick road, it's the shiny brick road. It's like, follow that path of light. Wow, okay. Um, This card, I know readers realize this, but these decks are always chosen appropriately for the messages that need to come through. It's got, this person has been through some dark days, okay? You've been through some rough times. See how horrible that sky is there? It's miserable, okay? The people underneath the dark section, which is majority of that image, or that scene, are not doing too good. But it's almost like you've been through hell and buck, and you're buck. But you need to make certain decisions, and one of your decisions is steeped in light and joy and wonderful things, and the other one is steeped in misery because there's so much darkness. I don't... Yes, I know that's very, very specific. But I really feel that it's just like there is a choice. There's like, oh, this is your path. This is where you came here. It's wonderful. It's all bright. The sun is shining. But the other is like, you've gone into the valley that's in the darkest part of what those clouds have to offer. You know, I really feel that. Um, <laughs> that's and you've got your backpack. You're ready for this adventure. But it's just like, do you want to continue down the path of dark? What you know. Or are you going to go on an adventure and have an absolutely wonderful time and have, you know, all the things that you could have possibly imagined coming your way? I feel like it's that kind of a decision for you, what a sign, or somebody else in your life. But a little more information about this. What's this decision in regards to clarify? It's water signs and moon, Venus, and rising signs for the Capricorn. For oh, strawberry super moon. Oh, okay. So it's in regards to a King of Wands. So the King of Wands could be a fire sign. Leo, Aries, Sagittarius. Um, does not have to be. He's a very, very fiery person. It's a very assertive person. Can be a leader. <sighs> I just heard a masochist. Can be a masochist. Woo! Okay. So this is it. This is the person. Funny how there's dark clouds above him too. This is the person that is represented. Doesn't have to be a man. It could be a woman embodying these traits. But the distorted masculine fire sign in this is controlling, uh, manipulative, can be a narcissist, can be a liar, a cheater. Um, but yeah, this could definitely be in the workplace or somebody where it's a relationship where there is an exchange of money dynamic going on because this is in regards to the house that affects finances in your life. So there's some sort of a financial situation or arrangement going on in this situation with you and this king of wands or whoever it is but in the past you had to make a decision in regards to this did you want to continue with all the darkness and the doom and gloom that's above this person and stay in this shadowy area or do you want to make a decision to step away from this person and i really feel that because i feel like this person is quite toxic um and yeah no i really there's a very unpleasant vibe about this guy he's very controlling he's very Aggressive almost. It's almost like my way or the highway. I don't care. Even if you do stand up and assert yourself, I'm going to manipulate the situation. I'm going to do what I have to do. I will get what I want. And I don't care if I have to, you know, psychologically manipulate you or abuse you or put you down to get what I want. And if this is happening in the workplace, oh my lord. Please try and find a healthy way to resolve this conflict. Um, let's go on to the next card. What comes into the present? What's happening with this full moon? Phase? The water signs that are going to see this reading. That comes after the King of Runs. Oops. <laughs> Three. Oh, really? Okay. 
<laughs> so I was like, really? No. It didn't feel right. Okay. So what comes next after the King of Wands? Oh, okay. Okay, I've had a few cards fly, so I'm just gonna have to check these. Okay. Alright, so we have next out the Ace of Pentacles. <clears throat> Ace of Pentacles is Aces, okay? It's the universe assisting you in manifesting something that is gonna bring in more abundance than you could have imagined and more abundance than you would be walking away from in this situation if you choose to walk away. I really feel like that you're in a dynamic of some description where you're dealing with a very, very toxic human being, but you're doing it because there is some sort of financial gain involved or some sort of financial reliance or dependence. Okay, let's just say that. Um, I don't know your life, so it could be anything. However, it's kind of like you've been, in the past, you were hesitant to make a decision because you were scared to lose this person because of what they represent and the financial stability security whatever it is they represented but i feel like this full moon is bringing through an opportunity for you which i feel like it's got to do with soul tribe i really do feel like it's because you've got all these animals here it's not a solitary creature there are at least three creatures in this picture okay so and i've got the trinity going in my head as well so it's a beautiful number it's almost like it's divinely guided and supported by the trinity the divine trinity um manifestation of something that will bring in more abundance more prosperity and more stability than your connection or this situation with this person is so yes it could be a new job offer it could be a new job like you stumble across the ad and you're like oh this is amazing i'm i'm great for this oh it, it has to be if it's happening now onwards like after you see this reading i would say go for it because i really feel like the universe is providing this can i clarify this please a bit more information on the ace of pentacles Wow, okay. <laughs> the world card. It's a completion of a major cycle. It's almost like you've outlived a karmic cycle, a time of your life where it was like, before you came down here, you decided that this portion of water science life, they were going to work off a whole bunch of karma and balance a whole bunch of stuff out so that they would go through certain things that wouldn't allow them to necessarily manifest the best abundance because they were too busy doing other things and completing other cycles. You know, karmic cycle, financial cycles, there is different cycles in our lives and there's different frequencies that we carry. Sometimes we can have financial overabundance blocks as well. So when you have blocks going on, of course you're gonna rely on somebody outside of yourself, somebody like the King of Wands to help you with that stability and that abundance. But once that block is removed, which I feel like this full moon is doing, that's the only reason why it's coming up, um, <laughs> every word that comes out of my mouth is always significant um, to the reading. So it's like the universe, like it's major destined events, like this cycle of toxic behavior, abuse, whatever imbalanced treatment that you had in the past is destined to come to an end because the world card is a major arcana, which is destined events. Okay, so Ace of Pentacles, very, very prosperous, abundant opportunity, business idea, manifestation, whatever it may be. Okay, especially if you do moon manifestation, somebody out there, oh, the mother load is about to start. I, I feel like this pentacle is like a tub and it would open up like there and just go and pour coins down onto the person that's it. I really feel like somebody's about to hit the mother load with whatever this business or manifestation or whatever it is and it's actually going to put an end to the cycle of lack and not having enough and having to rely on people outside of yourself okay because ace of pentacles is an ace it's a one it's not you know it's not a collaboration it's not inclusive of others so this is something that will benefit you the one number one that is important in your life all right water signs so let's get into what's happening in the future two cards in the future please wow okay wow i love it that's so funny it's like we've just said you're putting an end to cycles with the world card and now we've got the card of moving away from troubled waters so this is actual confirmation to say that all the chaos and the conflict and whatever craziness that you've experienced with this king of wands in the past you're going to be moving away from it going forward from this full moon um, it may take time because cycles take time to complete the energies of certain things when they come to an end. It's almost like the energy may come to an end, but then it takes a while for you to kind of have that little ah moment and that epiphany and to go, 
you know what, I'm done with this, I'm so out of here, I'm not doing this anymore. And for some of you, you might it might take you a week, a few days, whatever it is, you, you're an individual in your own right. So it might take you time to get to that point, but <laughs> once you're at that point and this manifestation comes through, you are out of there. And Six of Swords implies moving away from troubled waters with unexpected outside help. So you've got to understand that it's divinely guided that this cycle of abuse and whatever it was, unfair treatment, um, you know, too much work and unfair pay standards, all that kind of stuff, whatever it is that you've been dealing with, those days are over. You're not going to be dealing with those energies anymore. So that's really, really reassuring. Water signs. Okay, so what is this final card to clarify? Six of Swords. Where's the help going to come from? Like, what kind of help? Or what would you like to tell me? What's the final card for this reading? Oh, for water signs. Wow. Six of Pentacles. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're moving away from imbalance, narcissistic, toxic energies, and you're moving towards balance. A fair exchange of energy, okay? A job or a business partnership or a entrepreneurship, which is your own solo business, where there is a fair and equal exchange of energy. And the universe believes it is your time to receive that now. Scorpio, Pisces, or Cancer. Because you got to see this, like most of the Six of Pentacles, there is not even anything on the scales. It's usually him giving the Six of Pentacles cards, sorry. It's usually one person being given more than another. You can see on these scales, he has one pentacle each. Okay, <laughs> it's very, very balanced. It is beautiful. Whatever you're heading towards is based in fairness, equality, high vibrational energies, a balanced exchange of give and take. Okay, it's like, it's beautiful. Whatever you've been through, water signs, things are going to improve. Okay, just move that that way so you can actually see what's going on with the cards. <laughs> I'm going to pull a clarifier for the past, present, and the future just to see if there's any more information. Um, but that's a pretty good water signs. Yeah, this could be a marriage that is coming to an end. Like I'll say that because the assets, finances, and the things that you value, you know, you have financial separations as well. And this could be coming, you know, ending a business collaboration, ending a financial relationship of some description or a situation which was mutually beneficial but I believe there was quite an imbalance. It's like what I'm feeling is there was an imbalance because you're heading towards balance now, you know? Or in the future, sorry. So let's clarify the two of ones, the king of ones. More information about this dynamic, about the decision that needed to be made with regards to the king of ones. <laughs> yeah, five of swords. <laughs> <laughs> um, the thief, the manipulator, the narcissist, the con artist, the one that's only in it for their own benefit, that's what the person was in the past. So yes, I was right. It is a very, very uneven exchange of energy. Um, this person's a thief. And like, the thief in a very broad context. Thief of your mental sanity, thief of your self-worth, um, self-respect, time, energy. Everything. I feel like they kind of siphoned a lot out of you, this person. Very draining energy. Very childish as well. So let us go into the present energy of the Ace of Pentacles and the world. What's this manifestation of the cycle ending? <laughs> Man, you're going to be the ruler of your own thing. Um, I believe it's very, very, very symbolic here that we've got both cards having the stag on it. So if you're into spirit animals and things like that, water signs, definitely check out what stag spirit would be wanting to tell you because this is a very, very loud and clear message right here. Um, <laughs> when something repeats, it's always worth noting. And notice another thing is that it's a full moon reading that we're doing. Yes, it's a crescent moon, but symbolic of the moon. Okay, so I feel like this full moon is huge for water signs. Um, I know it's a full moon in Capricorn, but I feel like for the water signs that are seeing this, this is a huge thing. This is you taking control, taking the reins of your own life. It's the emperor. The emperor is usually a boss 
for a leader or a business owner or a manager, someone that can manifest, someone that can lead, someone that can take control of a situation. So that wishy, if you've had wishy-washy energy where you've kind of been, oh, I need this person or I need someone to have that the source of financial stability in my life and then I'll sort of like, I'll benefit on, it on the sideline. Uh -uh. You're forgetting that and you're taking the reins and you're going to go out there and you're going to own whatever it is that you're doing. Whether it's a business, whether it's putting yourself out there for a spiritual mentorship, leadership, healings, whatever it is, you're going to do it. This, I feel, this full moon, if there was any stagnation, any um, procrastination, any fear blocks, things like that, I feel like the universe is conspiring in your favor, water science, to actually clear that for you. So it's a beautiful, beautiful thing. Okay, this is a little bit more information in the future. Six of Swords and the Six of Pentacles. It's a beautiful. Two Sixes, 66. The number of harmony as well. Like, you're heading towards harmony and balance and fairness and 5D energies and people that love you and value you. What a science. Beautiful thing. <laughs> I know there's no cups here, but I'm telling you that when people love you and they value you, they treat you fairly, do you? They not. All right, let us clarify this. Six of Swords and the Six of Pentacles. A little more information. Not these. Okay. Six of Swords and the Six of Pentacles. Whoa. Sorry, guys. My guys are just like ooh, everywhere. Okay. One card to clarify the future section, please. For the water signs, full moon in Capricorn. Hmm. A little bit more information around. Haha, <laughs> Ace of Swords. <gasps> yeah, baby. Okay, so that being a clarifier, Ace of Swords is usually very much about divinely guided truths. Epiphanies. This is someone standing in your power and taking ownership of everything. This is someone who's not fearful to admit that they may not have may have had addictions in the past. That kind of thing. You know, someone that is owning themselves so much they don't care what anybody thinks. It's the NFGC. Um <laughs> no fucks given crew basically. Um that's where you're headed and that's where your life is going to be. It's going to be steeped in truth and authenticity and positive frequencies and you're gonna be living your truth. I really feel it. Because it's like you're taking control of something and you're putting something out there. You're creating something or manifesting something in the universe. But this is all destined events. This is, it was meant to happen. You were meant to shift out of this cycle of um, imbalance and suffering and reliance. And in some of your cases, codependency as well. You know, because that energy of a decision that wasn't made in the past. And one was a very dark path and one was of light. It's not easy. So, let us conclude this reading with... A few work your light oracle cards. Ooh. First one we have Sisterhood of the Rose, Beauty and Devotion, Priestess, Mystic, Teacher. Okay. Get two more, please. For the water signs. Full moon, Capricorn. <laughs> wow, we have Priestess, which was also in the Earth sign uh, reading. So if you're rising Venus, whatever sign may be an Earth sign, maybe check that reading out. It may resonate for you also. Because that card came out in the exact same position as the rice reading also. And the final message for water signs for this reading. Awakening, energetic upgrades, a new way of being, integration. I believe that's an activation card, so I will read that when we get to it. Place that there so you can see the cards. All right. We actually have an extra one that's actually fallen out. I'm going to take it because it was like, uh-huh, they need it. So we have number four, which is answer the call. What is your soul calling you to do? Mm, listen to your soul's inner guidance, I just heard. Because it's like, if you don't listen to what your soul is telling you, you're going to miss the boat on that Ace of Pentacles. I really feel that. Okay, just one second. I'll read this for you. All right, what a science. This Sisterhood of the Rose is your first card. So let me read that for you. Okay, 
as beauty and devotion priestess mystic teacher. The Sisterhood of the Rose is a lineage of priestesses and mystics who devoted their lives to serving humanity and seeding light consciousness all over the earth. A cross-section of ancient lineages, it is the path of devotion and beauty. Walking this path means being devoted to seeing and creating beauty wherever you go. The rose symbolizes the heart and the sacred geometry of all life. You are being called to notice the beauty around you, particularly in nature, and hear the whispers of Mother Earth. You are being called to spend more time in nature, as all the ancient secrets live there. Mother Earth is constantly whispering. Spending time admiring her creations, sorry, spend time admiring her creations, and you will be rewarded with insight and grace. You are being called to take a little more time to both notice the beauty that exists all around you and contribute to the beauty of the world in your own way too. This could be through your own creations or in the little things like how you dress to picking flowers for your home. Every time you devote your time to creating beauty, you harmonize the planet a little more and the shift in vibration can be felt. So your action is surround yourself with beauty and create beauty wherever you go. That is your challenge, should you wish to accept it. What a science. Okay, now the next card is Priestess. What is it? Alrighty. So this is a second card. Oops. Oh, sorry guys. It was totally accidental. It is. The Priestess is a teacher dedicated to service, freedom, and leadership. You don't need to have it all together to lead. In fact, it helps if you don't. No one wants to be a perfect angel who hasn't made any mistakes. Let your life be your message. Don't underestimate the power of sharing your story. It's by hearing someone else's journey that we feel less alone. We realize that we're actually all in this thing called life together. The difference between a follower and a leader is that a leader has the courage to go first. In stepping out, they shine a light on the path for others to venture forward too. Don't fret too much about trying to work out who is your tribe. Don't get stuck in age, income, hobbies, or occupation. The best way to discover your tribe is to look in the mirror. If you feel called to lead, chances are it is because at some point in your life you longed for someone to lead you. Your tribe are longing for exactly the same thing as you were and are, and might only be one step behind you. Hell, they may even be right alongside you. You don't need anyone's permission, just the courage to stand up, embrace your struggles, and the peaks and troughs. You don't need to know the way, just believe that there might be one. Your tribe is waiting for you. Step forward so they can find you. There you are. Sorry. <laughs> don't realize I moved the card. Okay. So then the third card we have here. Are. Awakening. I'm getting a clear audience song. Um, Stalgia. S-T-A-L-G-I-A. -A, the Awakening. It's actually a awesome, awesome song. My team keeps on playing it to me to get my vibe really, really high. It's very pe peppy, and I'm not sure why it just started playing in my head. So, And the fact that the card is an activation card called Awakening could be quite synchronistic. All right. So this is your card. And it says, Energetic Upgrades, A New Way of Being, Integration. You are going through a period of awakening. Things are changing within you and at many levels. You are starting to remember ancient truths and discovering more and more about who you are and why you incarnated. You may find that you are experiencing past life flashbacks, seeing the invisible thread that is woven, woven through all of life or feeling, sorry, or even feeling Kundalini Shakti rising in, through your body from the base of your spine. The most important thing for this time is not to overthink it and to stay grounded. Share your experience with, with like soul people while you consciously integrate them. Journal and pay attention to your dreams. You are remembering and your soul gifts are emerging. During this time of transition and awakening, you may be called to devote, devote yourself to being of service. There are ideas, truths, concepts, books and creations waiting to be birthed into this world. Stay open to receiving them. Pulling this card may be a sign that you are here to birth one of these creations into the world. Or perhaps you're being called to make a shift in your life in order to be of service. Don't think too much about it. Instead, repeat the following work your light activation. So, <laughs> if you're ready to receive this activation, you can hold the screen up to your heart. 
so that the card is held up to your heart and say, I surrender to my awakening. I allow the Shakti energy to rise from the base of my spine. I open myself up to the universe, using me in a way that delights my mind, body and spirit. That will be powerful for those of you that receive that activation. I can tell. Oh, she's awesome. Now, your final card is Answer the Call. And I'm not sure if you guys are getting the message yet. Like, get out there. Put yourself out there. Like, they're repeating messages here. And I really feel like some of you are going to be spiritual leaders or guides or supports in some way, shape or form. Even if it's just sharing your own story so that the next wave feels supported. And feel, doesn't feel like, oh, there's no way I'm a spiritual person because, trust me, most first waivers have had some very, very colourful histories. And self-judgment and criticism was one of the biggest barriers that I believe a lot of us had in our ascension. So, I don't know, somebody needs to hear that. Like, share your addiction recovery story. Give other people the strength to do the same thing. I have one also. And I will happily share it. Um, however... I'm, yeah, like, I'm just putting it out there, like, I know it can be scary, but that card was so, like, share your story, because your story will make somebody else out there feel validated, and sometimes you have no idea how much that can mean, um, yeah, <laughs> somebody needs that. Alright, so this is, what is your call, soul, sorry, what is your soul calling you to do? Your guidance is divinely guided. You are being called to answer the call of your soul. It might be scary, it might not make sense, but if you trust your soul's yearnings, you will live a life beyond what your mind could possibly imagine. Answering your soul's calling is not a one-time thing, rather a lifelong dance. Deep down, you already know what you long for, what your soul you learn, yearns for. <laughs> Whatever you are called to do, this is your calling. Don't overthink it. Don't wait for permission. Just say yes. Most people are waiting for a step-by-step -step plan before they take the first step, but intuition doesn't work like that. It takes faith and courage to answer the call of your soul, and that's why most people don't do it. But you are not most people. Water signs? You are in exactly the right place to answer your calling now. You don't need to know the whole plan. You don't even need to know where it is leading. You just need to take the next step. No one has ever had the complete, perfect plan. There is no end destination. There is no right or wrong way to do it. And you do not need permission from anyone else. Sometimes the more resistance we have around answering a soul calling, the more important it is for our soul's growth. Oh, what a science. I have quite literally lived this, okay? Um, with the healing journey that is involved in the Reiki that I have recently been trained in, um, there's ancestral healing, where you can actually heal your male ancestors and your female ancestors. So going back to like your parents and healing their baggage and what their ancestral line's baggage is, it's quite a powerful thing. And I was procrastinating for days and days and days. And what, the day when I was about to do it, I quite literally burst into tears. I'm like, why am I freaking out? And your guides are like, because somewhere in your soul, you know what's coming. And there's a part of you that's a little bit anxious about that. And you kind of have to just bite the bullet and take that leap of faith. Have faith in yourself. Any detour is always just more scenery to learn from and take in, isn't it? Alright, good luck. Water signs. Happy full moon.